He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor coming to you live and definitely in color from our Scottsdale, Arizona studio. Welcome, everyone. We are on show number. That's going to be 263. Welcome, everyone. I have an interesting show for you tonight. Let's take a look at the device on camera, too. Uh, this is the new Trent, the new Trent Airbender 3 wireless keyboard case. And this is quite the, quite the gadget, if you will. Uh, what this does is it's actually a case, and of course it's a keyboard, but it's very portable and uh, very fun to use, if you will. Very easy to set up, very affordable, and I definitely like it. And we'll take a quick peek at that in just a moment. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone, and obviously you know that uh, you can watch us uh, right on the uh, website, and that would be uh, www.thegadgetprofessor.com, and hopefully uh, you'll... You'll look on that page and love it. And uh, if you want to get the newsletter, you're going to go right here in the right-hand corner, right there. If you click on newsletter, uh, in that newsletter spot, you put your email address on every Thursday evening. You will get the show notes, and uh, that's basically a bookmark of everything that we cover in the show. Uh, you don't have to write any notes or anything. Everything we talk about, all the apps, all the gadgets, everything is there. And many times uh, you will get a free coupon or two or some kind of a discount, and uh, we're very proud of that. So let's uh, take a quick peek at uh, this gadget of the day. Again, it's made by New Trent. It's the Airbender 3, and uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, there's a case, and obviously your iPad fits right into here, and the case is already pre-assembled, so there's not much you can do to that because it's pre-assembled. On the back, if we take a look, you're going to see an interesting device, and that I'm just going to call an angle iron. I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but if you see this plate, this metal plate, they have very cleverly put a little button on here, and you can actually slide that arm back and forth, and the whole point of sliding that arm is to give you the different viewing angles. You'll notice right here uh, that there's a slot, and in this slot is where the iPad actually fits, like so. And the further you pull this out, your, your bar here, the more angle you'll get, so you really have control over the angle of viewing. They've done some clever things. They've actually put grooves in this steel plate here. Maybe it's aluminum plate. And what this groove does is it actually locks in so your iPad is not slipping all over the place. Very, very clever. The other thing is because you can slide this bar pretty much to whatever angle you need, you're able to put this in the vertical format, which I think is, is awesome. So if you want to go into the vertical format like so, uh, this will also do that. So very clever, both the uh, portrait and the uh, landscape formats are available and very easy to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go in and set this uh, Bluetooth, pair this up with my device. So I always like to start off when I pair a device with the uh, Bluetooth off. So I'm actually going to turn the Bluetooth off. So in order to connect this to the keyboard, it's very simple. Uh, what you're going to do is I turn the typically turn the Bluetooth off. I turn it on, turn the keyboard on, press connect, and boom, uh, pretty much instantly it, it's connected. I've never not had it connect, so uh, uh, that's pretty cool. And basically what you're going to connect to is the, uh, the new Trent keyboard. That's what it's called. I know you can't see it on this keyboard here, but uh, that's what it's called. So essentially what you're going to do is slide this bar back, and uh, there it is, all nice and compact, and uh, works quite well. I'm pretty pleased with it for sure. And if you're wondering how much it costs and where you can get it, you can just get it on Amazon. And uh, let's take a look at that page right now. It's called the iPad Keyboard Case, and uh, it's the Airbender 3. And this costs $34.95. And I got to tell you, uh, it's compact. It's very well built, and uh, I really like it. The only minor thing is the keyboard's not exactly the same as your keyboard that you're using on your computer, but if you watch where you're typing, it won't take you too long to get used to it. So definitely check that out. Well worth the money, very solid build, and I think you'll uh, 
you'll definitely enjoy that especially if you're looking for a case you can spend 34 bucks for a case and not get the keyboard so uh, I really like it it works well all right let's get into some apps of the day apps of the day and uh, before we actually do that I'm gonna show you some cool things uh, this was brought to my attention this website oh about a month ago and I had forgotten about it and then the same dude who showed me the site actually purchased a car from these people and it's called Carvana Carvana or Carvana however you want to pronounce it 800 number, 800 number but essentially you can buy your next car there you can have a range of payments uh, it comes with a warranty uh, you can get personal loan terms for 4,900 plus cars in our inventory uh, customers average saving is three hundred thirty three dollars they'll, they'll actually finance it for you uh, they'll get it to you it has a 4.9 uh, overall consumer rating I've never bought any from it anything from it but what a cool idea and uh, a better way to buy a car 16 1,681 dollars less than Kelly Blue Book delivered to your door seven day test to own so it's a it's a pretty interesting site you might want to check that out I thought it was kind of cool speaking of checking out things you're gonna like this uh, if you're in the market for a new credit card or even if you have a credit card and you don't like the one that you have these are the best credit cards of 2016 the best credit cards of 2016 and what's nice about this particular comparison is it takes each card and it tells what the pluses are and what the minuses are and depending upon what you want to do uh, whether you want to travel or whether you want to just get a lot of uh, reward points or you want warranty coverage or whatever the case may be you'll find a card here and uh, they do an excellent job of defining what the actual uh, uh, coverages are for each card and what the advantages are some cards have a fee some cards don't have a fee so it really depends on what you want but uh, just by reading a very small paragraph you're gonna get the gist of what's going on so check that out I think you're gonna like it now here's an interesting piece of news for you everybody's familiar with Adobe flash and I gotta tell you slowly but surely people are killing it off uh, a couple months ago I guess Firefox stopped using it and now Google uh, put another nail in Adobe's coffin with the newly announced plans to block the buggy software and here's a whole article about that uh, uh, you're not going to be able to load this automatically on Chrome very shortly at least by the end of the year uh, Chrome now the world's most popular browser is phasing out plans to support Adobe's flash uh, to all but 10 websites uh, by the end of the year soon Google plans to let uh, people access flash enabled websites only on a site by site basis with a prompt warning of the dangers of it and essentially why they don't like this uh, because flash is vulnerable and people can infiltrate it and do nasty things to your computer so um, just a word to the wise be aware now this is kind of a crazy tip for you but uh, this works really well I'm sure a lot of you have alarms whether you purchase them yourselves or install them yourselves or actually uh, have a company that mans it for you and you just pay a fee a monthly fee for maintenance if you will and for um, uh, monitoring services this device is put out by Fortress Security and I have one of these on my one of my alarm systems and what it does is it's two things it's a very loud how loud 140 decibels that's really loud it's a little bit louder than a jet plane taking off and it's a strobe and what happens is not only is it loud but when that strobe starts flashing and someone enters in your, into your house it scares the bejesus out of you it really does I have two of them I have one in the front of the house one in the back of the house and I actually have a siren that's outside of the house and I gotta tell you in the uh, unfortunate event that I forget to turn off the alarm and walk in and don't hit the alarm code immediately oh my god I mean I know it's gonna go off but wow I gotta tell you it just sends shivers up and down my spine and you get nauseous because of the strobe so if you want a little bit more of an advantage you may want to look into something like this it's not expensive it's 60 bucks you could probably install it yourself or if you don't want to mess around with wires which I certainly understand you may want to ask your alarm company if they have a device like this it's really good as a matter of fact I like the strobes I have one in my bedroom yeah 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 and the reason I have it is because I can't hear the fire alarm sometimes that's why I have an extra loud siren and I have a strobe so they promise me that if I'm sleeping uh, which is a rarity the strobe will be flashing and it will wake me up so uh, strobes are pretty good and accompanied by loud sounds it's even better now 
this is a great program. I like this. I use this program a lot. It's called Auto Hotkey. And what is Auto Hotkey? Auto Hotkey, called AHK, and guess what? That's Auto Hotkey, is a free open source macro creation and automation software for Windows that allows users to automate repetitive tasks. It's driven by a scripting language that was initially aimed at providing keyboard shortcuts. So what this will do is, if you have a repetitive task, for example, many times when people uh, email the gadget professor, they say, hey, we'd like to have our, our uh, product online. What do we have to do? And I send them a, a sheet of the rules and how we operate. But then they ask me, where do I send it to? Well, I always don't like typing out the office address. So what I do is I have a, uh, a hotkey, and I just hit Shift-Alt-A, and it dumps my address wherever the cursor is, and it saves me the pain in the neck of typing out the name, the address, the phone number, the whole bit, the zip code, and it's basically a hotkey. So you can hotkey pretty much anything that you want. You can automate uh, sending keystrokes, mouse clicks. Uh, you can remap buttons to do, them, to do what you want. You can have any typing... Uh, uh, colloquialism that you want, like BTW, by the way, you might have that as uh, Alt X. Wh whatever it is that you want, you can create these keys. It's very simple to operate Auto Hotkey, and they have an excellent, uh, I guess you call it tutorial that you have to read through, but it's very simple to use, and I think you'll find this a lot of help if you're working on a Windows platform. Now, someone asked me where I can get free songs from and that don't cost any money and they actually said that they're on prime and they have prime music but i don't think they realize that you can go into prime go into music and click free and you're going to see thousands of songs thousands that you can you can probably spend a couple hours this goes up to 400 and i think there's 50 or 60 songs per page and it might even go beyond 400 so uh, here's a whole plethora of, of great songs. You may not like them all. You may not be into yoga, but if uh, you take some time, they have Christmas tunes in here, royalty-free ambient music. Pretty much every genre that you could think of, they have here. They even have ocean waves, which is one of my favorite things to listen to, the ocean waves. Uh, that's a lot of fun, I got to tell you. Last night, you know, one of those sleepless nights again. So uh, I have all these, these gadgets that I try to use to help me sleep. So last night, I was listening to uh, the ocean and then thunderstorms. Thunderstorms is my absolute favorite to listen to. For whatever reason, it's just soothing and helps me go to sleep. So I'm listening to this thunderstorm, and I listen to it frequently, and I'm half asleep, half awake, and all of a sudden I hear, boom, crack, you know, and I, I wake up and I go, man, this, this thing just woke me up. So I turned, the, turned it off, and then I realized that, guess what, we were having a monsoon with thunder and lightning, and it was real stuff, and it it cracked so loud, so loudly, and boomed. It knocked me out of the bed. So, uh, so much for my my soundtrack, if you will. All right. Here's another piece of software, an app put out by Binary Fortress. This is called FileSeek. This is a very cool program. Did you ever try to find a file on Windows operating system and you just can't find it? You know you have it, but you can't find it. You want to load FileSeek. It's totally free. What this will allow you to do is do all kinds of searches. You can search for match text inside files. You can search for regular expressions, so, uh, folder searches, subfolder searches, match one with a different pattern, exclude one, filter results by date, by size, uh, by profile. It goes on and on. This works lightning fast, totally free. Check it out. Check it out. And now, folks, this is probably the most asked question that I get in terms of software. software. I get this probably once a week. What software program can I use to recover my digital photographs that I know were on my SD card or on my hard drive? I've lost them all. It was a vacation. They're, they're family photographs. There's probably about 20 or 30 different programs out there that you can use. One of the ones that I found works really well and is simple and, of course, is free is called PhotoRec. And this is a file data recovery software. It's designed to recover lost files, including uh, video files, documents, archives from hard disks, CD-ROMs, and lost pictures, thus the photo recovery name, from any digital camera memory. This works really well. It's totally free, and I've never not seen this recover a photograph. I can honestly say that. I've used this a lot for people, and it works 
pretty, pretty good. If you don't, if this does not get your photograph back, then the photograph is probably corrupt. The file is corrupt on your media device, and there's nothing you can do for that for the most part. So check this out, Photo Rec. I think you'll like it. Now, this software, again, free, it's called John's Background Switcher. Do you ever wonder how uh, someone's computer gives you these beautiful photographs and it's like a collage or they keep changing and it looks so cool? Well, you can actually load this for free. And what this will do is when you have your uh, computer go into the, uh, I call it the picture mode, but uh, it actually will do individual pictures on your computer. It will do folders containing pictures such as my pictures. It will do Flickr sharing, Facebook, Instagram, all kinds of wallpapers. So if you're ever looking for a screensaver on steroids, this will do it. It even, it even does Smug Mug, Dropbox. It will play music for you. Totally free. Well done. Nice piece of software. You will like it. So if you're into uh, 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 screensavers, this might be the one for you. Check this out. Now, a lot of apps today, folks. A lot of apps. Uh, two more. This one is a must. Do you ever wonder how people get these beautiful looking business cards or stationery and create these wonderful newsletters or catalogs, brochures? They do it with fonts. You know, you get a set of fonts when you purchase your computer, whether it's the Mac or PC or whatever computer you're using. You can for free go onto one of these sites. This particular site is a thousand one free fonts and just scroll down and if you find something that you like, just download it and then you'll have that font. I can't begin to tell you how many fonts there are. Thousands and thousands and thousands. And I'll tell you, they make a difference. And if you have a business card or a newsletter where you're putting out some type of a brochure for people, using the right font really helps it look graphically sound. So check this page out. So folks, here's our last app of the day. It's not really an app, it's a web page. I think you're gonna like this. Do you ever wonder if a website is legit, like you find a, a price on a camera or a TV and it's too good to be true? but you're not really sure, and you, you're, you're reading, the price is right, and you compare it, and blah, 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 and you get reviews, everybody likes the site. Well, if you go to this site, it's called Scam Analyze, Scam Analyze. And what Scam Analyze will do is exactly what it says. It's going to analyze whether the website is a scam or legitimate. So you could put whatever site it is that you're looking on, you know, joescamera.com, whatever it may be, and it will actually tell you, what your risk is for using that site. It will tell you right off the bat if it's, a, if it's a site that doesn't have good rating and they recommend not using it, it will tell you that. Or if they've had no complaints and the site's been reputable, they'll also tell you that. So this is a handy site to keep, uh, to keep bookmarked and I think you're gonna find that uh, you'll, you'll be using that more than you think. It's a trust rating, reputation ratings guide you to find trustworthy levels of the website. It's safe browsing, it will identify unsafe websites for both security and privacy. Now remember, it's not only checking out whether the site is, is reputable and you can buy items from it, it's also going to tell you whether it's going to be uh, containing malware or security breaches and it's not a good site that they would recommend for you to go on to because it's going to infect your computer. So this is a handy site. It's HTTP secure so you can check the identity in the SSL certificate. Again, that is a, a mechanism that tells you that the that the site is secure. And also it's social present. You can check Facebook, Google, Twitter feeds, Pinterest, and stumble upon. So it's a quite a robust site. I think you'll enjoy it. And that's going to wrap it up tonight for the Gadget Professor Show. I'm sorry I spoke so fast tonight, but uh, been a long day and uh, I hate doing the shows late at night. I like to do them when I get up in the morning, but uh, I just didn't have that luxury today. So in any event, I will see everybody next Thursday night. So long from The Gadget Professor. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. <laughs>